types of contract. On the basis, types of contract can be classified on the basis of four categories. On the basis of creation and formation, it's called as an express contract, implied contract, quasi contract. On the basis of a validity, valid contract, void contract, voidable, unenforceable, and illegal contract. On the basis of execution and performance, executed contract and executory contract. On the basis of liability, it's called a bilateral contract and unilateral contract. On the basis of formation, express contract. What is called express contract? When two parties enter in a contract, either oral or written basis. So it is a transparent contract. For example, X says to Y, will you buy my car? Even he accepted. So orally, they are exchanging their contract. That means that when two parties are clearly communicating about their uh, agreement or contract, either in a oral or written, that is called as an express contract. So here X write a letter to do Y, I offer to sell my car for 1 lakh rupees. Will you like to buy it? He is sending either uh, he is sending this uh, proposal by written. So this is called as an express contract. So express contract is done based on oral or written. What is called implied contract? An implied contract is one which is inferred from the act or conduct of the parties or from the circumstance of the cases. For example, implied means indirectly. So what is called implied in the sense if you are utilizing anybody's service, it means that you have to pay for it. That is called implied contract. It, you do not say, for example, you are uh, driving in a government bus. You are driving, uh, yeah, you are driving in a bus. Uh, it means that you have to take a ticket because you are utilizing the service. So you don't expect somebody, you don't expect that somebody will tell you, see, you are entering in a contract with the driver and the conductor. You have to buy a ticket. So nobody will tell you, okay, this is an implied condition. Do you understand? Implied in the sense indirectly or uh, in, indirectly you should understand that you have to pay for it. So another example I have given here, you actually a pulley in a uniform, pick up the bag of the Y to carry it from railway platform to the taxi stand without being told to uh, told by Y. To do so, a Y allows him in case that is an implied offer by the pulley and implied acceptance by the passenger. Now there is an implied contract between the coolie and passenger, then he is bound to pay the amount to the particular coolie. Do you understand, right? So whenever we travel in the train, once we reach our destination, either central railway station or wherever it is, maybe, uh, once we, you know, uh, once we arrive the railway station, if we uh, come up with the luggages, we can find a lot of coolie person, battler over there. So what they, what they will do, they will come and approach you, shall I carry your luggage? Then you are saying, yes, then uh, they will carry the luggage, then they will drop you near the taxi. Then what will you do? You have to pay for it because he has done some service for you. You have to pay for it. Okay, another example also we can give you. Uh, I can give you. Uh, what is that? For example, you are booking a, a taxi by Ola or Uber, whatever it is. Uh, the taxi has arrived. You have uh, you have reached your destination. You are traveling and you reach your destination in the sense. Once you reach your destination, you have to pay for the service, whatever you have utilized. Right here, you should not uh, say the driver that no, 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 you didn't tell me before and it's because before booking the taxi itself, you are seeing all the things in the app, in the mobile app itself. Uh, how much cost? How much cost for the uh, transportation? Everything you are saying, seeing right. So once you utilize the service, you have to pay for it. That is called implied contract. So express means oral and written. You enter in a contract with somebody else. Implied means indirectly. That means indirectly you will be utilizing somebody's service this means that you have to pay for it you should not expect somebody else to communicate to you either in a oral and written quasi contract so quasi contract already we have discussed in the separate heading if you have not seen in the description box i will give you the link please kindly go through the types of quasi contract so what is called quasi contract when there is no intention to enter in a contract but the law will impose you early uh, impose you to enter in a contract with somebody else so this is not actually a real contract so due to the uh, moral and ethics principles and justice, you are entering in a contract. For example, uh, where certain books are delivered to the wrong address, then the particular owner of the goods, he has to deliver the goods to the either the courier, uh, the courier office, or else if he knows the particular person's owner of the goods, he has to return back. That is called quasi-contract. The, yes, and the another example I can tell you. In apartment, there are two parties are staying over there. Uh, one person is called Kumar is staying in a ground floor. The another Kumar is staying in the fourth floor. Actually, the courier has come for the fourth floor Kumar, but it is wrongly delivered by the courier to the ground floor Kumar. 
so kumar uh, uh, some of the family members of the kumar received the courier uh, after some after one hour after one day kumar has sent that courier and he comes to know very well that no no this is this courier that actually is not belongs to mine so what he will do so there is no contact between this person actually the contact is between the fourth floor kumar along with the the courier person but now this came to the ground floor kumar so what he is doing the law actually there is no intention to enter in a contact by the ground floor kumar with the fourth floor but due to some reason the ground floor kumar he now he came to know that actually the courier is wrong fully delivered to him instead of to the fourth floor kumar now what he will be doing he will be handovering the goods to the fourth floor kumar or he will be handovering the courier to the courier officer sir. that is called as a quasi contract on the basis of performance there are two type of contract that is called executed contract and executory contract what is called executed contract when both the parties have completed their respective promise or obligation that is called as a executed contract for example yes offer to sell his car to wife at 1 lakhs even why bought the car and so given a money here in this contract both the parties have completed their respective promise one party has given the product the another party is given a money so when both the party have completed their respective promise or obligation that is called as a executed contract then what is called executory contract when the both the party get to perform or any one party get to perform their contract that is uh, uh, perform their obligation that is called executory contract for example same example x offered to sell his car to y for 1 lakh in this x sold the car to the y why he is asked some time to pay a money so in this case x performed his obligation whereas y is yet to perform right so here one party yet to perform his obligation that is called executory contract this is a one example in the another example same x offered to sell a car for 1 lakh rupees y is uh, offered to accept, uh, agree to accept it okay but they uh, in this example yes uh, he has not handed over the car to the y even y has not given money to the x both the party uh, have not completed their respective promise that is called executory so again i am telling you executed in the sense when the both the party have completed their respective promise whereas executory in the sense when any one party or two party get to complete their respective promise that is called as a executory contract so as i told you what is called party executor party executory contract i have given explanation for this on the basis of validity valid contract what is called valid contract when the contract fulfills all the conditions prescribed by the law that is called valid contract x offer to marry y y accept x offer this is a valid contract because here there is no any uh, there is no any kind of forceful is there the threatened nothing is there when two parties enter in a contract the contract which fulfill all the essential elements of the contract that is called as a valid contract then what what is called void contract void contract is a contract which is valid when uh, they enter into but which subsequently become void due to impossibility of a performance change of law or some other reason for example x offer to marry y y accept the x offer but later on y dies do you understand at the time when two parties enter in a contract it, it is called as a valid but due to some reason they cannot able to execute the contract so for example x would like to uh, marry y at the time entering in a contract it is valid but uh, after some period y dies so what will happen you cannot able to execute the contract so due to some reason you cannot able to execute the contract that is called void contract so what is void contract at the time of entering in the, into the contract it might be valid but due to some reason it might be called as a void contract so another example also i can give you so uh, i'm just uh, i'm the seller uh, i'm a wholesaler i'm just exporting the goods to the singapore okay uh, now it is a valid contract so from past 6 month i'm keep on uh, transferring my goods exporting goods from here to india to singapore but suddenly if any war announced or suddenly if the government or law or parliament has given any kind of a statement that you should not have any kind of a touch with singapore or you should not uh, have any kind of a transition between singapore and the sense i could not able to continue it that is called void contract at the time of entering in a contract it might be valid but due to some reason it's become a void one voidable what is called voidable contract so voidable contract in the sense it is an uh, uh, you know 
from one party it might be considered as a valid whereas from another party it might be considered as a void contract so what is that for example a is a landlord person landlord okay landlord okay so he, he is having some more land he is having around 2 acres of land nearby his land one portion of land around 1200 square feet land is there which is uh, belongs to somebody else actually so uh, what that landlord is doing landlord is doing he is asking the particular farmer small he is a very poor farmer he is asking the poor farmer uh, since i have a large volume of a land so please hand over your portion of 1200 square feet land to me for that i will give you the money whatever it is uh, according to the market price then in this case the farmer is replying to the landlord i am sorry sir since this land is my uh grandfather's one and father's one uh so it is a sentimental oriented as well as i am a very poor person i have only this uh 1200 square feet land which is to be used for farming for purpose so i could not able to give you then what happened the landlord is threatening him threatening him and forcing him to give it then what happened he uh he also uh you know uh to escape from such activity he has given a land but later on later on the farmer or farmer's son he, they are putting a case against a particular landlord since this is a case and this is a you know this is a contract which is uh, created based on some threatening purpose so that is a uh, missing of free consent because already we have seen that uh, uh, in the essential elements of contract there is a concept is called free consent all the contract must be created with help of free consent so uh, this is a contract where the free consent concept is milling, uh, missing so automatically what will happen the case will be favored to the former that means the landlord he has to hand over the goods to the uh, hand over the property to the former so do you understand what is called voidable contract voidable contract in the sense when the contract is considered to be considered to be valid from one person point of view whereas it is considered to be void from another person point of view that is called as a voidable contract so same example i have given here what is called illegal contract so illegal contract in the sense the contract which is not lawful unlawful for example x agree to uh, agree to y rupees 1 lakh to kill z is it a lawful one no it is unlawful or x is uh, entering a contract with uh, uh, y to do smuggling activity or uh, you know which is forbidden by law if you are entering in a contract with somebody else which is based on illegal one or which is forbidden by law that is called as a illegal contract so thank you as of now we have seen the essential elements of a contract and the uh, classification of contract see uh, the students always whenever you study the business law mercantile law or legal business environment whatever may be the subject especially if you study the chapter indian contract act these are the basic uh, terms you should know what are the essential elements of contract and types of contract i hope so that this video will be very helpful for you for further reading you can see the description box i will mention the link over there you can go through it if you like my video please kindly do subscribe and like it thank you